سلام علیکم یا مولا To the martyr of land of Karbala Our salams to the son of Fatima To our master who sang God Allah Assalamu alaykum ya Mawla Assalamu alaykum ya Mawla Ya Mawla This program was developed by education experts and Islamic scholars in order to develop and instill a love for Imam Hussein in the hearts and minds of young children. We have used developmentally appropriate strategies and techniques in order to engage and teach children the very difficult concept of Ashura. We invite you to discuss with your children their thoughts, beliefs, and feelings after today's episode. May Allah bless you and your family. Okay, so I could draw a circle and then, and then put the circle in like a pot of boiling water. What? That doesn't make sense. Uh, man, these uh, instructions are so confusing. It's like, it's like one is saying one thing, but the other is saying something totally off the wall. Oh my goodness! Uh, how do I figure this out? I'm like, I'm in the air. Oh, so now I'm Mrs. Here, how are you how doing? How are you? Yeah, how are you doing? Oh, it looks like you got here early today. Oh, I was just trying to go over these instructions that my cousin, oh. actually my teacher, left for me to uh, so draw a flower. But, mm -hmm. but I saw my cousin around the paper and, and she was like writing something on there. So I don't know, it, the instructions are so confusing now. So you got instructions from your teacher on how to do something. It looks like it says how to draw a flower. Yeah. And then you said your little cousin was here and she wrote some stuff on here too? Yeah. And now you're confused? I, I really don't know what to do because it's like, draw a circle and then put it in a pot of boiling water? <laughs> draw a circle and then get a pot and put boiling water in there. Oh my goodness. And then it says, draw six ovals and then add your pasta. My goodness, that is a bit confusing. Yeah. It looks like your teacher wrote directions on how to draw a flower, but your cousin wrote in between the lines and gave you directions on how to make pasta. Well, it's like I don't know which ones are which. You know, it's so confusing. Mm, I can see what you mean. So you have some information here, and some of it's what you're looking for, and some of it's not the correct information for how yeah, to draw a flower. Yeah, I'm not really sure which one, to, which one to do next and first. Mm, I see what you're saying, Amir. You know what? Let's go ahead and get our program started. Our okay. friends are here and they're waiting. All right. And then I think our lesson and our ayah of today might help you out. Oh, yeah, are you ready? for sure. Friends at home, are you ready? Alhamdulillah. Let's begin the way we always do. A'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I begin in the name of Allah, the most kind, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum, friends at home. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. How's it's, it going? It's me, Ms. Azira, and our beloved friend, Amir. And we welcome you all to our program where we are going to be commemorating our beloved Imam Hussein, his family and companions, inshallah. Oh yeah, alhamdulillah. I, I love learning about what happened because I feel like I have so much knowledge to gain. That's correct, Amir. All right, friends, so if you remember yesterday, we learned so much about our beloved Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. We learned about his family, we learned about his qualities, and we learned what made him such a amazing role model for us all, right? Yeah. Well, today, what we're going to be learning about is some people who didn't necessarily like that, Amir. Wait, wait what? How could somebody not like, like somebody who's so kind and, and stands up for truth and justice? I know. It's really confusing, that makes isn't sense. it, friends? It doesn't make sense. But you know what? It happened. And today, we're going to discover why that happened and why it's important for us to make sure we can very clearly learn the lesson of separating truth from falsehood, inshallah. Oh, okay. 
Okay. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Let's first do the rundown of what we're going to be doing today. Oh yeah. What, what's the plan? Okay. So first things first, we are going to be using our handy dandy Muharram project booklet, which you can download Whoa. a copy of here, inshallah. This booklet was developed by our team here at the Wondertime Show and Al Kisa Foundation. Oh. And it's full of beautiful lessons and projects and even some special special stuff in there. So oh, if you haven't already okay. gotten your copy, please go ahead and do so, inshallah. Yeah. Today we're going to be doing our Box of Wonder. We're going okay. to have our Verses of Light. Inshallah, we are also going to be having um, a very interesting demonstration. We're going to be hearing from some young scholars and we even have a special guest. And at the very end, oh. we're going to wrap it all up with a very cool project to help us memorize our eye of the day. Oh, is that project from the booklet? It is from the booklet. Oh, so if you I'm haven't already gotten one. a copy, go ahead and get it. Shall we begin? Yeah, let's do it. It's everyone's favorite time. First things first, let's get out the Box, Box of, of Wonder. wonder. I can't wait to open it and see what's inside. Me too, Amir. Now, friends at home, remember, our box of wonder contains clues and I'm gonna need your help. So put on your thinking cap, take out your magnifying lens, and let's see what we can find inside. Are you ready? Oh, the magic, the mystery. Friends at home, are you ready? Bismillah. Wow. Ready for our eye of the day? Yeah, and I see all the noor. <laughs> okay. Wait, Miss Asia, where are my sunglasses? <laughs> all right, here we go, friends. So, our first clue, clue number one, and there's three today, is right here. Oh. Now, for those of you who have been watching for a while, this one's probably familiar to you. You know this one means what, Amir? X-Men. <laughs> Not X-Men, friends. Oh. What does it mean? X marks the spot. No. No, that's right. It means no or do not. Right, friends? Good. That's clue number one. Put that one right here. Now let's dig into clue number two. Ta-da. Here we go. Amir, what's this? Oh, that's, friends that's at home. something really strange. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, let me give you a clue. If you're making a cake, you might want to use one of these. Mm. Friends at home, for those of you who said whisk, you are correct. This oh, is a whisk. You got it. And we use a whisk to do what, uh, Amir? We use a whisk to de-risk. <laughs> Not quite, but we use it to mix ingredients. Okay. Oh, oh, okay so that's yeah, our yeah. second clue. Mix. Okay. Okay, so we have do not and mix. Now let's see what our last and final clue is. Here we go. Hmm. Can you see that, Amir? Yeah. What do you see? What, some sort of checklist. It looks like a checklist, that's right. We have two boxes, one with a green check mark and one with a red X on it. And next to the green check mark, we see the letter T and we see an F next to the red. Have you ever seen this before? Maybe if you're in school, you might have heard of a true or false question oh, or a quiz. Oh, true or false. I, I, guess, I was actually wondering if that's like our shooting schedule for the show. Like we're gonna uh, tape the show on Tuesday, but not on Friday, <laughs> not on Friday. Juma, everybody remember. <laughs> All right. No, not quite, Amir. Oh, okay. This represents those two words, true and false. All right, that's our last clue. Let's put it here. And now let's see, can we put it all together? Friends at home, let's try. We have and do not mix true and false. Hmm. Oh. Should I read the ayah for you guys, friends? Yeah, please. All right, let's see. It is from Surah number two, chapter number, I'm sorry. It is Surah number two, Al-Baqarah, and it is verse number 42. And the ayah is, and do not mix truth with falsehood. Mm. Mm. 
-hmm. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us something that we should not mix truth and falsehood, Amir. Oh, what, what could happen if that does? Wow. Well, what did happen when that happened? Because we do know, and today we will learn more about how on the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein stood up against the mixing of truth and falsehood. But before we go there, why don't we all try and memorize this beautiful ayah together using the verses of light. Are you ready, Amir? I think so. Friends at home, are you ready? Excellent. Let's go. Let's go. ولا تلبس الحق بالباطل ولا تلبس الحق بالباطل ولا تلبس الحق بالباطل and do not mix the truth with the falsehood Whoa, I gotta practice that one more. MashaAllah. Thank you so much, Brother Ashfaq. Yeah, thanks, bro. All right, friends. So, I have a very special demonstration for you all today. Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to follow along, I invite you to go ahead and press pause. And with your parents' permission, you're gonna need a few things that you might have at home. And don't worry if you don't, because maybe you can try this later on, inshallah. Again, don't forget to ask your parents. The things we'll need are a bowl. Okay. We're going to need some sand. Okay. Okay. I have some sugar here. Oh, okay. I have a big spoon. And then I also have a pitcher of fresh water. Oh, all right. Okay. So once you've gathered those things, you can do this demonstration along with us. It's a little experiment. And Amir, uh -huh. I have you here to do it with me today. Oh, I, we're like a good team, Miss Nazira. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, we are. Alhamdulillah. All right, friends. So. Today, we have our sand here, and it is going to represent the truth. Remember, we're talking about that ayah, right? It said, do not mix the truth with falsehood, right? Yeah, we gotta be careful. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna have our sand represent the truth, and we're gonna go ahead and pour it into this bowl here, okay, Amir? Okay. Beautiful, pure oh, sand. The sands of time. <laughs> All right, now, we also have this sugar here. Okay. And this sugar is going to represent falsehood, friends. Oh, all right. So falsehood, is that good or bad, Amir? Well, I mean, falsehood is definitely not good, but sugar can be tasty. Sugar can be tasty. It might taste sweet, but is it always good for you? Oh, I'm starting to make sense, actually. Too much <laughs> of that is not good. Right, but in this case, we don't want any falsehood nope. in our lives, right? Zip, zip, zero. Mm-hmm, because you would only have truth and falsehood. Those two things do not what does the ayah of the Quran tell us? They should not mix. Excellent, Amir. But in this case, what happened in Karbala and what happened in Ashura is we had our beautiful Ahlul Bayt, Imam Hussein, right? Yeah. The mess Remember how we learned this yesterday? Those who brought us the truth and guidance, who, t who, who are a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Yeah. They are represented by the truth, but we had someone named Yazid. Have you heard that name before? Oh, I mean, maybe in passing, but, but who was he? Well, he was one of those people that I alluded to earlier when I said that not everyone loved the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Wait, but, wait, wait, what? How, why would somebody not like Imam Hussein speaking up for the truth? Hmm. Well, you see, maybe it didn't benefit them. So someone like Yazid, what they did is they actually tried to mix in falsehood with the truth, oh, like oh. this. Because he was pretending to be the leader of the Muslims. And I put it probably a little too much in here. I'm going to scoop some out. But he was pretending well, to be... Well, it's probably what Yazid did too. <laughs> You're right, Amir. He was pretending to be the leader of the Muslims. But he was actually changing Islam. Like not giving prayer the importance that prayer had. He was very oppressive to people who were good. Uh -huh. And in a lot of ways, he took people away from Islam while pretending to be the leader of the Muslims. Oh, that's not good. It's not good at all. And so by doing so, 
what he was doing, and I'm going to take my spoon now and do what the ayah of the Holy Quran tells us not to do, because this is what actually happened at the time of Imam Hussein. The truth and the falsehood was being mixed. Wait, 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 wait. Mr. don't do that. I know, Amir, but this wait. is just a demonstration, right? Inshallah, we're never going to do this in our own lives, right? We won't mix truth with falsehood, oh. right? We're always going to stick with the uh, truth. Yeah, yeah, but even but just watching for... that is like watching a train wreck. <laughs> it is, Amir, and I'm so sorry. But inshallah, we're going to learn a lesson from it, okay? So we mix it up. Now, Amir, you see, and you take a close look, close look in here, and friends uh -huh. at home, you take a close look as well. Yeah. Do you see how the truth and falsehood is all mixed up? Yeah. Now, if I ask you, Amir, can you please go ahead and separate those out? Would you be able to? Well, maybe if you give me a Snickers bar, because it's going to be a while. <laughs> yeah, it would be very difficult, right, friends? Now, if you're following along with us at home, you can go ahead and try and see if you can separate grain by grain the truth from the falsehood. I'm not saying it's impossible, but would it be very, very difficult to do so? Yeah, I think so. It would be a very difficult task indeed. Now, unfortunately, in the time of Karbala in Ashura, what ended up happening is this is how it was for the people. The truth and the falsehood was so mixed up that people didn't know who to listen to. They couldn't tell who was right and who was wrong because Yazid had so much false information out there. Oh, what did he do? He was basically saying false information about the Islam and about the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt, things that are not very nice at all. Oh People my were gosh. very confused. And so Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, he had to stand up for the truth. And yes, on the plains of Karbala, he was martyred along with his family and companions. But by doing so, he purified the truth from falsehood. And Imam Hussein is represented by this beautiful, pure, clean water here. Now, friends, you can do this with me. We're going to pour it in and see what happens, okay? I'm going to keep on pouring. And then I'm going to give it a little stir. Okay. Now, I'm here. up. You want to help me, Amir? Oh, well, you're doing such a good job. I'll, okay, I'll, Taylor, just... I'll hold your hand. Here we go. Okay, thank you. Now, oh, friends, if you're doing this at home, it. you're going to start that's to notice it. something is happening. You'll notice that the water is getting a little bit cloudy. But if you lift up the sand, what do you see? Do you see any more sugar in there? Oh, whoa, it's all the sand. It's all the sand. That's right. All of the sugar, which is the falsehood in this case, has dissolved and if there's a clear separation now again from the truth and falsehood which is exactly what our beloved Imam Hussein did and if we wanted to perhaps we could pour out that falsehood right yeah. it's much easier to do now now that we've separated the sugar thank you so much Imam Hussein that's right our beloved Imam Hussein did that for us indeed we'll go ahead and pour it out and if we leave this out to dry once again we'll have our truth here, pure sand. Alhamdulillah. Okay, friends. Remember, there's a beautiful hadith from Imam Jafar as Sadiq where he said that every day is Ashura and every land is Karbala. Do you know what that means, Amir? No. When our Imam said that, what he was teaching us is that at that time, Imam Hussein stood up against oppression. He stood up for truth and justice. Until today, we still have oppression happening in this world. We have falsehood that exists. And it is our job as lovers of the Ahl al-Bayt and followers of Imam Hussein to always make sure that we are standing for the truth and against oppression. So for example, we have our beloved brothers and sisters in Palestine who are struggling against oppressors to this day. Yeah, Allah, and even though the happening. media might show them to be the oppressors, we know that that's a mixture of truth and falsehood once again. And in reality, those brothers and sisters are those who are being oppressed. And it's our duty to help them and pray for them. So boys and girls at home, I ask you to remember them, inshallah, and pray for them. Inshallah. Just like we remember our beloved Imam Hussein, we remember how to apply that in our life today. Because remember, every day is Ashura and every land is Karbala. Alhamdulillah. Imam Mahdi, please come back soon so you can serve as the water too and just clean out all the falsehood. Inshallah. Ilahi Amin. All right, friends. I 
have a young scholar who I reached out to, who has a beautiful poem to recite for us that goes along with our theme for today. Would you guys like to welcome our friend? Oh yeah, please. Let's do it with the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajahum. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Amina Saeed and I'm eight years old and I live in East Lansing, Michigan. And today I'll be showing you a poem that I wrote that is about good versus evil and a sketch that I drew. How is it possible? How is it true to hear such a story and not reflect it through? The grandson of the prophet had in mind a peaceful humanitarian message with only 72 on his side. Nowadays, history repeats itself, with people forced to leave their homes, just like how Imam Hussein did when he was forced to leave the domes. He went to Karbala to fight the Baqlid and took his family for the Haq they stood still. This life has two paths. Never to combine them we should. Allah says in, this, in his book, and do not mix the truth with the falsehood. Oppression is everywhere now, Syria, Iraq, and Palestine. By following Hussein's message, all humanity would be fine. From the bottom of my heart, Hussein is my leader, my imam. One day I wish to visit his shrine and send him my salam. And this is a sketch that I drew. And uh, this is a sketch that I drew of Imam Hussein's shrine. My salam, labayka ya Hussein. Labayka ya Hussein. Oh, mashallah, that was a great poem. It sure was. Mashallah, young scholar. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, Amir, you asked me a question earlier. Yeah, I did. I was kind of wondering how do we separate the truth from the falsehood? Because because you pour, you know, you know, used some water, you poured it, but, but I'm not sure what I should do. Like, should I take a bowl of water and pour it on everybody to separate it from them? <laughs> no, Amir, I don't think you should do that. But oh. I do know who we can ask who can help us out. Okay, they, so the people wouldn't appreciate that? <laughs> I don't think so, Amir. Okay, yeah, let's ask them. You know who? who? Let's visit our beloved Sheikh Salim, who might Whoa! be able to help us. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and he can help us figure out how to separate the truth from falsehood. Oh, Ready? That would be amazing to know. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Amir. Ms. Nazira and all of our friends, may Allah reward you for uh, commemorating and mourning um, the events that took place on the day of Ashura. And I want to send my salams to Imam Hussein alayhi salam and all of his noble companions. I wanted to speak to you today about truth and falsehood and how we can tell the difference a lot of times, if we look at the world around us, there are things which seem like they're true, but when we go and look into them deeply, we realize that they're false. And sometimes something might look like it's not right, but when you go close and study it, you realize that that's the truth. So how can we understand where is the truth and where is the falsehood? Well, one of the tools that we've been given by Amir al Mu'minin, Imam Ali alayhi salam, is that of knowing the truth by the truth and then looking at what people say. He says, I'arif al haq ta'arif ahla. Go and find the truth and then you're going to know the people of the truth. How can we take that and what can we learn from that? One of the things is that we should never ever do things just because people are doing them. You all know the story that. On the day of Ashura, Imam Hussein salam, was talking with the enemies and he was trying to teach them what's right and what's truth. But instead of listening to the Imam, what did they do? They started talking loudly and they ignored what he had to say. What did he tell them? He says that you filled your stomachs with food which is haram, food which is prohibited. Now, sometimes people eat haram things. Sometimes they uh, watch things which they shouldn't. Sometimes they listen to things which they shouldn't. And that makes it so that that 
thing inside of them that Allah gave them that allows them to identify what's true and what's wrong, that starts to go bad. So we have to always make sure that we keep ourselves pure. And the last thing is that we know that there are people who we can always trust to be with the truth. And those are the Ahlul Bayt This is the example that we see in the stories of the companions of Imam Hussein Alayhisam. One of the great stories is that of Zuhair ibn Qayn. When Imam Hussein Alayhisam sent his messenger to Zuhair ibn Qayn to invite him to join him, initially he wasn't keen on doing it. He was kind of like, oh, if I go, then what's going to happen to me? And for some time he wasn't committed to the Ahlul Bayt. But then who is it that got him to realize where the truth was, it was his wife. His wife said to him that, Zuhair, this is the son of the Messenger of Allah. Why don't you at least see what he has to say? And then you can decide. What did she know? She knew that if it's the Ahlul Bayt, here it was Imam Hussein Alaihissalam, the grandson of the Prophet, she knew that he could never be on anything but the truth. So she reminded Zuhair of that. And when Zuhair got that suggestion, he went to Imam Hussein and he came back and he was the happiest man alive because he had found the truth. Let's remember the story of Zuhair ibn Qayn on the day of Ashura. Assalamu alaikum ya ansara abi Abdullah al Hussein. On the day of Ashura, after Imam Hussein alayhi salam finishes his Dhuhr Salah. There is Sa'id ibn Abdullah al-Hanafi. He had stood guard over the Imam. He had taken arrows left and right. He is now falling to the ground, but he has one question of his Imam. He says, O oh, Imam, awafayta, awafaytu Have I been faithful to you? O oh, Imam Hussain. Imam Hussain tells him that yes, Sa'id, anta amami fil jannah, you are going to be ahead of me in jannah. As for Zuhair ibn Qayn, he also stood guard for the Imam. But now he wants to go and show his support for truth, for Islam, for the Imam. When he leaves this world, Imam Hussein alayhi salam is very saddened. He was the right, he was in charge of the right side of his army. Assalamu alayka ya Zuhair ibn Qayn. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's great advice. It sure is. All right, friends. Now it's time for us to do our project of the day. Oh, so you're going to cool. take out your handy dandy. Muharram Project Booklet, which okay. again, you can download your own copy for free. Just go to the link down below. Oh, the and floating letters. Yes, and you are going to go to lesson number two, which is titled Truth and Falsehood. Oh, and you're okay. going to see something that looks like this here, a little printable for you. You're going to follow the directions that's on the side here in order for you to make a lantern. Now, for those of you who have pretty sharp eagle eyes, you might have noticed something that's been hiding in the back here. Should I pull it out? Oh, yeah, please. Tucked away on the back today, we have this right here, friends. Do you know what this is, Amir? Oh, it looks so beautiful, but I actually don't know. Well, it's not lit right now, but this is actually a lantern, right, friends? All right. Lanterns come in all different sizes and shapes and designs, and this is quite a beautiful one that I got from Iran. Now, the reason why we had the lantern is because we have a beautiful hadith from our beloved Holy Prophet who said Imam Hussein is Misbah al Huda. Do you know what that means? Mm, Misbah no, al Huda, which means he is the lantern of guidance. Which means, oh. you know, today we learned about how there's a separation from truth and falsehood. Right. Well, if we want to be on the path of truth, who do we need to follow? Oh, we need to follow Prophet Muhammad. And the Ahl Bayt, that is correct, Amir. And Imam Hussein, for us, is like a lantern. He, what does a lantern do? It gives you light. It yeah. guides you when it it's dark. It makes it easier to see stuff. Exactly, when it's dark, a lantern is there to guide you so you know what direction to go to. And inshallah, our direction is towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, friends? 
Yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing for our project today. You're going to go ahead and get that page printed out. You're going to follow the instructions. You're going to put it together, and you're going to create your own little Ooh, lantern. I like that. Like this. Amir, here you go. Oh, thank Got you. Got one for you here. Oh. You can even make a bigger version of it, which I did over here, using oh. a piece of construction paper, following the same directions. Same concept, it's pretty simple once you get it down the first time. And I put a little candle in here, it's a, it's a tea light can, or it's a electric candle. You wouldn't want to put a real one in here because that could cause a fire, right? Yeah, you may end up with you an even put bigger on the light. candle. <laughs> and there you go, we have another candle to remind us that Imam Hussein is the one that we want to hold on to to help guide us to the truth, inshallah. Right, Amir? I think that would be so amazing. Amir, uh -huh. you remember those uh, directions you were so confused about oh, earlier? Oh yeah, they're really confusing ones where I'm supposed to be like boiling a circle. <laughs> yeah, so you remember I told you uh, it had something to do with our lesson and I think you might have figured it out by now. Oh, well. Because we had like the true directions and then we had like these false directions kind of mixed in that was confusing yeah, you. Yeah, like the fake news stuff. Exactly, the fake news stuff. So what we can do is pull out an eraser. Okay. And erase all the ones written in in pencil, which is I think what your cousin was practicing with. Oh, yeah. And it happens that your teacher wrote in marker. Yeah. And so if we just erase the whole page, you'll notice what happens here. What do we have left? Oh, the, the truth. Yes, the truth. We have the true directions are oh, here. The false wow. directions are Alhamdulillah. gone. Alhamdulillah. Just like we learned today, right? We don't want to mix the truth and falsehood. Yeah. Is, is there anything like that eraser that we can use online? <laughs> All right. Alhamdulillah. Okay, friends. It's almost time for us to get going. Uh -huh. Okay. Before we do do that, we want to recite a Surah Fatiha for the marhumin of the sponsors of today's episode. And we also want to do a special ziyarah to our beloved Imam, his family, and companions. Oh, for sure. So please join us. Oh, and thanks everybody for sponsoring the show. السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين الذي بدلوا مهجهم دون الحسين عليه السلام السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله Thank you for joining us today friends Alhamdulillah we learned a lot about our beloved Imam Hussein we learned beautiful lessons that we should carry on in our lives today and every day, inshallah. Now don't forget friends, if you, when you do your projects, go ahead and send them into us and inshallah it might be featured in one of our future episodes. Oh, I can't the wait to see for all that, that is cool right stuff. Here. We love seeing your work, so don't forget to send it in, please. Yeah, I really want to see all the different like colors you guys use mm -hmm. and materials and ideas you have. That's right. All right, friends. As always, think about those lessons that we learned. Inshallah, we're going to keep them safe in our heart. And as always, put them to action with our hands. Inshallah. Oh, let's do it. Until tomorrow, we bid you farewell. Fi aman Allah. Fi aman Allah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> صعب والله ننسى وسط العين مرسى نحر يضو الكون مناحرنا تفتى على الخدين بالعبرة هذا اللي كتبنا أبد والله يا زهرة ما ننسى حسينا عبدنا الله وياه وبدنا فدنا وعلى وعدنا اليوم أبو اليمة جينا بالفطرة وبالفطرة عشقنا أبد والله يا زهرة ما ننسى حسينا